Today's video is a tutorial on how to create an organic nature flower animation. We're gonna start off by creating the illustration in Illustrator, which will cover some really good basics, and then we'll hop into After Effects and animate it from there. I started out by creating the base of the stalk of the flower. So first I'm gonna hit P to bring up my pen tool. So just P, bring up that, and then I am gonna change my stroke color by double clicking it over here to a greenish color as such. And then I wanna simulate kinda of like a bendy stalk. So I'm just gonna click, click and drag, click and drag. And then we can always hit A to get out of there and then we can select individual points. And that's a pretty good stalk, nothing too crazy. You can always select if you have a weird something, you can go in, mess with the little handlebars or whatever, but this this is pretty good. And I'm just gonna increase the stroke width to about five will do, keep it nice and even. So now we have the base of our stool. From here, I wanna create the little leaves. So again, I'm gonna hit P to bring up my pen tool. I am gonna simulate kind of the leaf that I have going over here. So it starts out by just being a, a little shape like that. And then it goes in and back out. So right now it looks a little weird, so we're just gonna adjust that. And I'm just gonna switch the fill and the stroke because we don't want a stroke on this, we just want it to be filled. So you can go in, you can adjust it as you wish, drag this out a little bit, stretch it out. I'm gonna select this point here and then I'm gonna use the little round tool thing to get a nicer shape. And that's a pretty decent, you know, little leaf and then we can just position however we want we can hit v to bring up the transform tools we can scale it however we want you can go into object transform reflect and then you can reflect either horizontal or vertical so if we just do horizontal and then rotate it a little bit put it right here duplicate it go back up to transform reflect and then vertical this time and just rotate it ever so slightly and just like that we have two leaves and now we can zoom in a little bit. I'm just gonna hit P again and then reverse it once again to only do a stroke. And then I'm just gonna select the middle here, go up to a leaf and just add a slight curve to it. And you can of course go in, you can change the width to a little less than the full thing. Maybe, maybe two will be good. So two and then just P again and copy that for the other leaf. From here, we are gonna go in and I'm just gonna hit L to bring up my um, ellipse tool or circle tool, whatever it's called. And I'm just gonna drag out a center of our circle and I'm gonna hit V once I've done that. And I'm holding shift while I'm making the circle just so it stays um, relative. So it's just a perfect circle, not a, an ellipse. Is that the other word? Anyways, reverse that. And then we're just gonna select a little faint yellow color. We just wanna kind of keep it kind of pastel -y. And I'm just gonna keep this up here for now. There's plenty of ways you can make petals, but we just wanna keep it pretty simple. So I'm gonna hit M to bring up my square tool. And then I am just gonna line it up a little bit, kind of think, boom, and then just line these two up. You can select them. And then over here, you can just hit this line middle tool so it's aligned perfectly. So I'm gonna select one of the corners by hitting A and then selecting, and then hold shift and go in one. It's a little bit too much, so I'll just manually do, let's say four on each side, just so we keep it you know, even. And one, two, three, four on the other side. And then maybe up here, actually, we'll just do hold shift and do one out and then select both of the top ones and select this rounded tool just to create that little nice top. I'm just gonna drag it down until the sharp edge is covered and I'm gonna center it up again. And then I'm gonna change the color of this and we're just gonna keep the color palette somewhat similar. So we're gonna do a pink publish and just do a very faint one. Now the cool thing with Illustrator is that you can very easily create this radial thing and you can do that with anything you want to really. I'm gonna select my object, hit object, go down to repeat, radial, and then boom, we already have a sh radial flower shape. Now it's in front of our circle, which we don't want. So what I'm gonna do while it's selected, I'm gonna hit command or control, whatever, that one bracket thing. And that's just gonna send it backwards so you can see the difference right here. And I really like this spread already. And I'm just gonna select these two and just center them up just to make sure. And then I'm gonna hold alt and drag this out while holding shift just to keep it straight. And then I'm gonna change this color to a darker color because they're gonna be our back petals. Go into one of them and I'm just gonna drag the size down to make it smaller. We're just gonna line all of these up just like we did before. And then for this one, I'm gonna send it to the very back 
and then we can just change however we want with these selection tools we have here. So kind of line it up with the middle and you can even add more spreads to them, less spreads and maybe even scale it up a little bit. Um, and then we can always adjust to meet the base here. I think I want to make him just a little bit bigger and narrow. So I'm just gonna drag upwards. Now we have a flower. Next thing I'm gonna do is click on our first set of petals. I'm gonna go to object, expand. And that's just gonna release them all so each one is an actual shape. And then I'm just gonna right click and ungroup. So by ungrouping, every single thing is gonna be in its own layer and it just makes our life a lot easier. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the back ones. I'm gonna do object and I'm gonna do expand. Okay, and then right click and ungroup. Now we can take this and we can just put it kind of wherever we want it, like that. We want to recreate the pot and this is super simple as well. So I'm gonna hit M and I'm just gonna change my color to a pot color. And then I'm just gonna start out by creating my top bit. And then I'm just gonna hold Alt and drag to duplicate it. And I'm just gonna drag it down to create the actual base and hold Alt again and drag inwards just to get a little bit of that. For this bottom one, I'm gonna select one corner and I'm gonna go in a little bit. Let's do one shift, see what that looks like. And that's a neat little pot. So that's how simple that is. We're not done yet. So I'm gonna duplicate this first and I'm gonna change the color to a darker color cause that'll serve as our background. So I'm just gonna send it to back again. I'm gonna send it all the way to the back so that it's behind our store. Adds that little bit of depth. First, I'm just gonna place this directly behind and now I'm gonna select my front layer and I'm gonna hit P and then while I'm holding Alt or Option, and then I'm gonna start dragging and then hold Shift, which will make sure that it's even on both sides. So it's perfectly stretching it down the middle or something. And then select my back piece as well, hit P again, and then do the same thing. And that's just gonna give us the illusion of depth. So that's really how simple that is. Select these two bottom corners at the same time, and you can just drag this to create a little bit of a curve. So I'm just gonna hit save just so, you know, we don't lose anything. I'm just gonna select the whole thing and I'm just gonna send it into After Effects into a composition I've already made by using Overlord. Just like that, we have the whole thing in After Effects and I'm just gonna use motion tools to extract it to get everything on its own layer, which will take a little bit. We're gonna have to do the fun part, which is naming everything to make it easy on ourselves. First thing is our pot base and I'll spare you from all this so you'll just see me at the other end of naming all the layers. I should mention that I'm not gonna bother naming the petals. I'm simply gonna select them all, pre-comp them and just name them out of petals for this one, for example. Now that we've named everything, it's finally time to start animating and I'm gonna start with the flower stalk. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna go to contents and I'm gonna add a trim paths. I'm just gonna check, see which way it goes. So I wanna start it at 100% start. It just depends on how you drew the stalk. So if you followed my exact steps, you'll be doing the exact same thing as me. So, and then I'm just gonna decrease it to zero. And if we go play that back, we have a stalk that rises. That is all we have to do for the file stalk. So now what I want to do is do one leaf at a time. And I'm also gonna add a trim paths to it. And I'm just gonna do trim paths. And this one will be probably the end. Yep, if I go forward to about here, I want it to be ended, go back zero. And if we play that, yeah, a little bit too far, stretch it out a little bit. We just wanna make sure that it doesn't start too much before the actual stalk hits it, just to get some of that one flowing into the next field. The good thing about this is we can copy this trim paths and we can add it to our second leaf stalk. So if you just paste that, that's perfect. And now we just wanna move, scoot it up a little bit so it lines up with our animation. So playing that back, hitting you, just brings up my keyframe, removes everything else. For the leaf, I want to do a scale animation, but before I do that, I want to line up my anchor point with the beginning of the stalk. That way the leaf looks like it bounces out from the leaf stalk. So I'm gonna hit Y to bring up my anchor point tool. And I'm just gonna drag this anchor point and I'm just gonna place it right here. And the same with leaf one, I'm just gonna place it right where it connects. And then we can go back out, fit the full thing. I'm just gonna select my two leaves, hit S to bring up scale, set a keyframe for 100, go back a little bit, set them to zero, and move them to match our leaf stalk. So you see the first one comes in, I'm gonna drag this forward so it kind of looks like it gets inflated from the stalk. I also want to add a little bit of movement to the leaf itself, kind of like it's swaying in the wind. The way I'm gonna do that is I am simply gonna select my two leaves, hit rotation. For the first leaf, we can start just over here and I'm just gonna kind of see what the animation I want. I wanted to start low and go up and sway back and forth. So we're gonna start at 
let's say negative 10, set a keyframe, and for the other leaf, I'm gonna start it at 10. It's just opposite sides, so opposites, plus and minuses. I'm just gonna go forward a good bit, and I'm just gonna reverse it to 10, and then negative 10 for the other one. I'm just gonna add some easing to this, cause, you know, we just wanna make sure that it looks nice, and this is way too big, Jesus Christ. And we're just gonna do slow, sexy speed, and add the keyframes, and I'm just gonna move these back to the beginning. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little expression to make it easy on ourselves and not having to add so many keyframes. So I'm gonna alt click the rotation and I'm gonna do loop out. Make sure it's loop out, not loop in. And then I'm gonna do a, in the parentheses, I'm gonna do a quotation mark and then set that to ping pong. Basically, once it gets to the last keyframe, it's gonna restart it, but like in reverse. So it ping pongs the animation. So you can see that we've added that to one of the leaves. So you can see it's just waving at us, very nice of it. I'm just gonna right click the rotation where we have the expression and copy expression only. And I'm gonna paste it to the other one. So now we have leaves that um, wave at us. Super simple. I wanna slow this down just a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag it out. And I'm just gonna move this back a little bit and extend it and just to offset the animations just a little bit. So now we have a pretty simple leaf waving in the wind animation. Go to our flower middle and I'm just gonna do a scale animation. I'm just gonna go to, let's say 12 frames, keyframe the scale at 100%, then set it to zero at the very beginning, select these two keyframes, we can ease it. And now while we are in this composition and we've done most of the work that we wanna do in here, I want to add the inertial bounce expression to our scale animations, just to add to that organic feel. And it's just gonna give it a really nice bounce and make it feel very light and fun. So I'm gonna open up my little expression cheat sheet. Now that I've copied the expression, I wanna add it to only the scales, but before we get into that, I'm gonna select all my keyframes that are not already eased. And now I'm just gonna select slow, sexy, playing that back. We have something that looks a little more organic. For the bounce, I do want something that's just a little bit more oomph, at oomph. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna select sexy speed for it. So if I all click the scale and I paste the expression we just got, and I think I want to probably gonna adjust it just a little bit. Actually, that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna leave all the parameters as they are, otherwise you can change the decay, the frequency, and the amplitude. I'm gonna right click the scale and I'm gonna copy the expression only again to make it easier to add it to other things. So down here for our leaf, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste it, sorry, on our scale and the same with leaf two. So now we have just a little bit of a bounce when they animate in. Anyways, let's get to the fun bit. I'm gonna start with our outer petals and this is pretty tedious. So I'm just gonna select one, hit Y, and I'm gonna move all the anchor points to the bottom middle of it. Now, since some of them are pretty weirdly shaped, like this one, for example, I can just use my keyframe anchor point mover. But for some of these diagonal ones, it's gonna be harder because I don't want it to be down in the corner. I want it to be right on the line here. I'm gonna select it all. I'm gonna hit S to bring up the scale and I'm gonna keyframe it at 100%. 12 frames and go back to zero, set that to zero, select them all, do sexy speed, play it back and we have that. Now I'm gonna select all of them again and I'm just gonna hit Command V to copy, to paste my expression onto them, which just is gonna add a little bit of bounce to the animation. I'm gonna select all my layers and I'm gonna use my motion tools thing to stagger the layers a little bit or to offset them, I should say. And I'm just gonna offset them by three and going from top to bottom, it doesn't really matter, and I'm gonna hit sequence. Good thing about this is we can hit U and we can copy this, go into a flower. First, move the anchor points of these petals. And just like that, I'm gonna select them all, Command V, go to fit, and as you can see, it's the same. So I'm gonna select them all and I'm gonna sequence them the exact same way. And then I'm gonna go back into our main composition and now we can start lining things up in the order that we want them to come in. So if we want the stalk to come in, we have the petals. So the only thing we really have to change is our petals and the flower head coming in. So probably around here, I'm gonna select my, these three things and I'm just gonna move them forward so I can see. And it comes to an end right about here. And so I'm just gonna put it here and voila, we have this. I do want to add a little bit of rotation to the petals just to add some more movement. So what I'm gonna do is for this one, I am gonna take my anchor point, do that with the other petals as well. And I'm gonna hit R to bring up the rotation. I'm gonna alt click it. I'm gonna do time times two for the first one and time times four for the other one. And then if you play it back, you can see they just rotate ever so slightly. You can even, if you want to, you can set them at the same pace. So they just rotate equal amounts. 
and just follow each other. And that just brings, you know, just adds a little bit of more character to it. The last thing I want to animate of the thing itself is the pot. I'm gonna select all three of these and I'm just gonna hit position and shift and rotation to bring both up. Solo these out so I can see what I'm doing. Essentially what I want to do is I wanna go 12 frames forward, keyframe the position, go back and I wanna drag these up a good bit. Then I'm gonna deselect everything and I'm gonna do the pot top and I'm gonna do the rotation, let's say a negative 13 and then the pot base, let's do plus eight and then the pot back and the pot top, I'm just gonna drag up a little higher. And it's very smart if you actually remember to actually keyframe your rotation. So I'm just gonna keyframe all of these. Luckily, it's pretty easy in this case, go forward and just set them all to zero. And I'm gonna select them all and I'm just gonna do a sexy speed. And if we play that back, we have this little offset it just a little bit. So I'm gonna set like my top, my pot top, my, my top back and just scoot it up a little bit. Select all three layers again, chop off the beginning just so we don't get some of that still standing motion. And just like that, we have a nice little animation. And once again, I'm just gonna copy my expression and I'm gonna add that to the position of everything. So paste that, right click, copy expression, do that. So now we just get a little bit of bounce to the position, which is just gonna add some nice follow through and just give it a little bit more of a fun, childish look. Unhide all of this so we can see everything again. So like everything that we didn't just mess with, which is all of this. And now I'm just gonna start it right when it lands. So I'm just gonna scoot all of this up to right about here. And that is pretty much it for the base animation itself. Although we have the base animation in place, we wanna add a little bit more life to it. So I'm just gonna hide all my keyframes because we don't really need that anymore. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a shape tool and I'm gonna go in and select the color. I'm gonna do like a grass color and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle out just about here drag that right above our solid, which is our sky. And just like that, we have a floor. I also want to add a, a couple clouds. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select my ellipse tool. I'm gonna change the color to a off whitish. And I'm just gonna hold shift to create a couple of circles. You can duplicate that, scoot it over, duplicate, scoot over, line it up a little bit better. Just like that, we have one cloud, duplicate all of these, move them up scale it up, move it over here, adjust the position of them, and you have clouds. I'm just gonna pre-comp one cloud, call it cloud one, do the other cloud, call it cloud two. I'm gonna open up the position and I'm gonna alt click the position, wiggle, and I'm gonna do, let's say a three by three. And that's just gonna add a little bit of movement, which might be a little bit too much. I'm just maybe just a 0.5, that's just gonna add a slight bit of movement to it, which you can just right click, copy expression only, and paste that in there. And there we go, we have moving clouds. Going back to our full screen view, we're gonna add a little bit of texture and loving to this animation. One thing that you guys should know by now that I love is pressurized time. So we are, of course, gonna add that, set that to 12. Actually below it, I'm gonna make another adjustment layer. I'm gonna add turbulent displays to create some texture. I'm gonna set the amount to 30 and the size to two just to get some of that board look, maybe actually decrease it to maybe 20 for the amount. I'm gonna open evolution options, random seed. I'm gonna alt click it. And I'm just gonna do random, enter and maybe five. And that's just gonna create just a little bit of movement. You can slow it down even more if you want to, maybe one. And that's just gonna create a little bit of movement in our scene. And I'm gonna duplicate this actually. And I'm just gonna set it to eight by eight just to get a bit more movement in there. And another thing you can do in your effect, if you think it's moving a little bit too fast, this is a very good hack. You can open it up and you can add a posterized time six or 12, whatever you want to. I like six just to slow it down a little bit more. Put that in there and that's just gonna slow it down just a little bit. Just give it a bit more of a hand-drawn look. Of course, on top, we're gonna add a transform for some camera shake. I'm actually gonna drag it below the posterized time. I don't even know if it matters. I'm gonna set the scale to 101. I'm gonna all click the position position and do like a posterize time six wiggle 200.2 you everything don't want to look at it and that's just going to add a little bit of movement to it and in our adjustment layer with the transform i'm actually also going to animate the scale i'm just going to set a keyframe at the beginning and i'm going to go to the end zoom in a little bit and playing that back we just have a little animation where it kind of zooms in that's pretty much it for the tutorial anyways that's pretty much it for this tutorial not much more to it we have made an illustration illustrator so that's fun that's new skill unlocked be careful and uh, we've animated it in after effects super simple and um, most was 
pretty much everything was just native AE, nothing fancy, no fancy tools other than Overlord, of course, but you can take your Illustrator stuff into After Effects without it as well, it's just more tedious. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching along and uh, I'll catch you on the, on the flip side. So thank you and uh, peace.